Hi, Ninja Nerds. In this video today, we're going to be talking about cranial nerve 5 trigeminal. Now, before we get started, make sure you go over to ninjaner.org. Check out all the notes and illustrations that we put up there for you guys. And if you do like this video, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe. Now, as we go in through our neuro, we're talking about trigeminal today. And instantaneously with trigeminal, you want to start thinking of the prefix here, tri. Tri meaning three. So for me, that initially is going to tell me a couple things. Within the trigeminal nerve, we actually have three separate nerves. And that's also going to allow me to lean into the type a little bit because there's both found within the trigeminal. There is a sensory and a motor. Now, given that there are three, I'm going to talk about them really quickly, and that's going to allow us to really then understand the function and then our assessment and then what could be going on with these patients as well. So as we look over here at these diagrams that I tried to make as clear as possible, we have our trigeminal nerve here. And as it breaks off, it breaks off into three separate nerves. And you can see that they are particularly all within the face here. And these three nerves, as they break off, break into these different regions. So from the side profile here, you can see the different regions that these nerves work on. And from the front view here, you can also see the three different regions. And I think knowing or at least understanding and seeing a picture like this helps you comprehend a little more as to where the trigeminal nerve is and then also what the functions are. So as we look at this here, we have the three different ones here. The pink one at the top here is going to be our ophthalmic, ophthalmic nerve. And the word ophthalmic is actually going to lend for us where this nerve is, right? It's right around the eye. So as you can see, it comes up, kind of hits on the forehead. It's hitting right underneath the eye and then on the bridge of the nose. The next nerve underneath here is this green one. And we can see that it's right here on top of a bone here. So if you know the name of the bone, then you're going to know that this is the maxillary nerve. And the maxillary nerve is kind of encasing this cheek area. You can see also a little bit of the sides of the nose and then a little bit of the top lip area. And then our last nerve is the one in the orange here coming down along the jaw, also hitting up in the temple a little bit. And that is like the maxillary, taking into a, a accompanying the bone that's there, which is our mandibular nerve. And you can see that we have three different nerves, but each one of these separate nerves of the trigeminal do not do both sensations. So real quickly, we're going to walk through. The ophthalmic nerve is only a sensory. It's able to sense, sense some pain, touch, and temperature within these regions. Maxillary nerve, same thing, is only a sensory, and it's able, again, to do the pain, the touch, and the temperature. And then when we get to mandibular, that is where we're going to get both. We're going to have sensory and motor within our mandibular nerve, and we'll talk about that in the function in one second. So now if we jump over here back to the function, we can see right here trigeminals coming off, right? As it comes off, it comes off and touches all these different portions of the face. So our function for our sensory portions of our ophthalmic, our maxillary, and our mandibular are going to be the sensation of temperature, touch, and pain. And that's going to be areas like the forehead, the cheeks, and then also the chin or jaw area. And then our motor is going to be within the mandibular nerve. And if you're looking at this area, right, you're looking at this diagram, mandibular, what is the main job of the mandibular, right? It's to kind of move up and down, right? So chewing is one of the biggest functions or the moving of the mandible in order for that up and down motion. Now that we understand that we have a motor and we have a sensory within the trigeminal, we can then go into assessment, right? So if we have a motor and a sensory, then we're going to have to assess motor and sensory. The way that we are going to assess our sensory is when we take maybe a cotton ball, you can do the, the dull or sharp, right, type of sensation, and you can go to the patient, tell them to close their eyes, and you're going to say, just tell me where you feel it. Is it your forehead, your cheeks, or the sides of your jaw, chin area? And tell me if it's soft or sharp, right? And then you can take the cotton ball and kind of go here, and they're going to say my, my left forehead, and it's soft, you know. And then I'm going to go down here, and they're going to say my right chin, and it's soft. So that is the way that we assess by using a dull or sharp and then going through with the patients having their eyes closed and assessing in those areas. For the motor, 
We can do this in a couple ways. One way is you're just gonna ask the patient to kind of bite down. You're gonna palpate the sides of their jaw. You're gonna see if you can feel the clenching of the jaw. So you're gonna say, okay, can you palpate your jaw for me? And then, uh, palpate your jaw for me. Can you <laughs> clench your jaw for me? And then I'm going to palpate on your, your cheeks here to feel the muscles. You wanna feel you know, symmetrical, equal, even. And then you can also ask them too, just to, if you wanna put a little resistance underneath their chin, right? And just say, can you just open your jaw for me? And you just say, open and just see if there's a little bit of push against it. That's at least gonna be able to tell you if this nerve is, is creating that motion, right? And then it's also giving it balance and equal on both sides. And then we're just gonna move into quickly with some factors that could be affecting the trigeminal nerve, right? So there could be anything that's going on with the patient, any type of neuralgia that's going on or neuropathy that could be decreasing. It could be any type of, you know, certain types of head trauma, because again, this is a cranial nerve coming out from the cranium, from the brain, able to get, pick up these sensations and create these motor responses. And then there's also one that um, can be shown to have some issues with the trigeminal nerve, and that's gonna be our multiple sclerosis, that demyelination of the nerve that's causing an issue for the nerve to actually receive and send messages and getting those signals. So those are the main causes or risk factors that we could see within a patient that's having issues with their trigeminal nerve. So again, could be things as like a neuropathy or a neuralgia within the brain, and within the um, nerve, and then also head trauma to the brain, anywhere that could disrupt that nerve pathway, and then multiple sclerosis, MS, that demyelination of the nerve. So I hope that from this video, it's at least creating a better understanding of why the trigeminal nerve and how the trigeminal nerve is important and why we assess it the way we do. It's because there's these three different regions that these three separate nerves are going towards and sending different messages for so we can get a better assessment of our patient if we're doing the touch, temperature, and pain, the assessment that we're doing with these different areas. So I hope if you can at least remember the assessment, then you're going to remember the nerve or vice versa. And that is our video here on trigeminal nerve. I hope you learned something from this Ninja Nerds. And as always, until next time.